Hello everyone! Today we're learning all about these helpful little forklift trucks. Forklift trucks are used in all sorts of different places, like factories and warehouses. They can lift and move things that are too heavy to be lifted by people. And they can reach much higher than we can. This is a training centre where people are taught how to drive forklifts. And my friend Florence has come along to get some tips too. This is Robbie and he's a forklift truck expert. So today he's going to show us all of the amazing things that these vehicles can do. Welcome to FLT Gecko, are you ready for your training? Oh yes Robbie! With all of these forklifts whizzing around, it's important to stay safe. To make sure everyone can see me, I'm wearing this bright yellow high visibility jacket. With this on, I'll certainly stand out. It's called a forklift because of these two big forks on the front. They're super strong and can lift very heavy things. Shall we see just how much a forklift can pick up? Okay Florence, you go first. Can you lift me? Woohoo, I'm so high! Okay, you can put me down now, thanks Florence. Can you lift five mechanicals? One, two, three, four, five. Well done, Robbie. Florence, can you lift Mabel and her family? Careful they don't swing off you. Oh wow! Robbie's going one better and lifting up a rhinoceros. He looks heavy. These forklifts can lift an impressive one and a half tons, which is the weight of this large rhino. A forklift has lots of different features to make it the perfect lifting vehicle. Robbie, can you please show us how to drive a forklift truck? Well, Gecko, it's quite simple. We have two pedals I need to use. One's the accelerator, second one's the brake. Use the accelerator to go and brake to stop. I have the steering wheel here. I turn it left, it'll go left. I turn it right, it'll go right. All I do is press the middle of the steering wheel for the horn. Oh, sorry, mechanicals. Did I scare you there? <laughs> These three levers control the all-important fork. Robbie can use this lever to make the forks move up. And down. Up. And down. He can use this lever to move them left. And right. Left. And right. And he can use this lever to tip them forwards and backwards. Forwards and backwards. These are called pallets and they are the main things that forklifts are designed to lift and move. Some things are far too heavy or too high up to pick up with just your bare hands. So this helpful forklift does the job. The forks fit perfectly into the pallets, which have heavy objects on top of them. Robbie then lifts the pallet up and carries it where it needs to go. Sometimes they need lifting back onto the high shelves. I know I couldn't reach up there. 
Normally vehicles are steered using the wheels at the front. But look! It's the wheels at the back that are turning. Wow, look at them whiz and spin around that course. It almost looks like they're dancing. Here comes the forklift, he's so clever, moving the parts around the store. Here comes the forklift, it goes forever, they put them down upon the floor. He turns to the left and reaches high, he turns to the right as he passes by. Forklift picks up things from down, down low, it's super strong and it can go, go, go. Show them what you can do. tiring work having all this fun. It looks like these busy trucks have run out of energy too. Look at that. Robbie's flipped open the forklift, like opening the lid on a box of toys. All of these trucks are powered by electricity. Robbie plugs them into the main power supply so the batteries can recharge, ready for another day of lifting carrying and moving. Thanks to Robbie and all the team at FLT Liverpool for teaching us all about these hard-working forklift trucks. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Can I get down now, Robbie? Robbie? Robbie! Hello everyone! I'm here in London with this special double-decker tour bus. But it looks like something's missing from this bus. Wow! Look at that! There's no roof on this bus. I can see everything up here. There's loads of tall buildings to see in London and because there's no silly roof in the way you can see right up to the sky. Every year around a million people from all over the world come to London and take a sightseeing tour with the original tour company. bus has its own tour guide who teaches the passengers all about special places in London and about the history of this amazing city. Today we're going to go on a London sightseeing tour of our own. Come on, get going. Hop aboard. Glenn is the driver of this bus and he makes sure he drives as smoothly as possible around the London streets. Right, Gecko, would you like a job? Ooh, what sort of job? We need a tour guide. Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I am your tour guide for today, and together we're going to visit the amazing sights of London. London is the capital city of the United Kingdom and the city grew around the river that goes right through the middle of it. This river is called the River Thames 
and today our bus is going to cross the river on some famous bridges. Ooh, look at this amazing palace. It looks a bit like my house, but my garage is a bit bigger. This is Buckingham Palace. Does anybody know who lives here? I'll give you a clue. Her name is Elizabeth, and she's been the ruler of England for over 60 years. It's my old friend, the Queen of England. Let's go and have a cup of tea. Hello, we're here to see the Queen. Uh, hello, Queen. Queen. Queenie. Queen. Queen. I don't think she's in. Queen. Never mind. Let's visit our next London location. Wow! This is probably the most famous clock in the world. This is Big Ben. And it's been bonging and telling the time for over 150 years. It's actually the bell inside the clock tower that's called Big Ben. The clock tower itself is called the Elizabeth Tower named after my friend, Queen Elizabeth. Just next door to Big Ben are the Houses of Parliament. They're some of the most important buildings in the United Kingdom. It's where the main decisions are made on how to run the country. Wow, I just love being able to see everything from this open top tour bus. I'm just glad it isn't raining though. What's this? It looks like a giant fairground ride. Ah, this is called the London Eye. And it's one of the biggest observation wheels in the world. It goes around very slowly. But that's so you can get a proper view of everything around you. We're about to go over a very famous bridge. You've probably heard a song about it. I hope the song doesn't come true. It goes something like this. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, falling down. London Bridge is falling down, my fair lady. Build it up with silver and gold, silver and gold, silver and gold. Build it up with silver and gold, my fair lady. Phew, we made it. We're now on our way towards the tallest building. Not just in London, but in the whole of Western Europe. Wow! It looks like it's touching the sky. That must be why they call it a skyscraper. The Shard has 95 floors. And there are 44 super fast lifts inside. Some of which are double decker. A bit like this bus. Here's one more bridge. This one's called Tower Bridge and it has two towers at each side. Amazingly, the middle part of the bridge can be lifted to allow ships to pass underneath. And here's the Tower of London. Lots of prisoners have been kept at the tower through history. There's no prisoners in there now but this is where the crown jewels are kept. These are the very precious jewels that the Queen wears on special occasions. Now it's back along the embankment towards Westminster. We turn right at the Houses of Parliament and come past Downing Street, which is where another one of my friends lives, the Prime Minister. Let's pop in and say hello. I think they live around here somewhere. Ah, this is the one. Number 10 Downing Street. Prime Minister! Primey! Prime Minister! Oh dear, they must be out as well. I guess they must be very busy running the country. Oh well, 
back on the bus. We're now passing Trafalgar Square. The tall statue is called Nelson's Column. It was built to remember the hero, Admiral Horatio Nelson. And this is Piccadilly Circus. Before you get too excited, this isn't a real circus. The name Piccadilly Circus comes from the fact there used to be a big circular roundabout here. What a shame there aren't any clowns, tightrope walkers or trapeze artists here. Ah, here we are back at base at the end of our tour. I've loved learning all about London today. See if you can tell your mummy or daddy an amazing fact about London now. Thanks very much to Glenn and all the team at the original tour for taking us around London on their amazing open top bus. We'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm spending the day with a real Stobart energy lorry. But look! Something's missing! Do you know what it is? Yes! That's it! We're missing the big trailer from the back! Let's hook it on! This is Andy and he's the driver of this lorry. Andy starts the engine by turning this key. He puts the lorry in reverse gear and carefully backs towards the trailer. Back a bit, Andy. Little bit more. There. Andy now has to do a few things to fully connect the trailer. He has to connect the hydraulic pipes and electrical lines. This means everything on the trailer can now be controlled from the cab. Andy then winds the trailer legs up. He turns off the trailer brake and fits the number plate onto the back. It's then back into the cab to test that everything's all attached. Brilliant! That looks a lot more like a lorry now. Andy, what's the best thing about driving a lorry? I really love life on the open road. You get to see a lot of interesting places around the country. Would you uh, like to see my truck? Yes, please. The front part of the lorry is called the cab. And this is where the driver sits. So Gecko, this is my cab. It's got all the usual things that you'd expect and some special surprises too. This is a steering wheel. It was up and down and every position that you'd want it to go. It's really, really good. Just here, this switch here, that turns all the lights on. And this here is the all important horn. And I also have a bed in the back. It's really, really comfy. Because Andy has to do very long drives, his cosy cabin has a comfy bed for him to sleep in at night. There's all sorts of other things in here to make sure Andy's comfortable for his long journeys. There's some curtains and a reading light. Wakey, wakey, Andy! It's time to go out on the road. So before the journey, Andy walks around the lorry doing his safety checks. Wow, there's a lot of wheels to check. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12, 13, 14. Each Stobart lorry is unique and gets given its own name. This lorry is called 
Demi Nicole. Right, Gecko, we're good to go. Hop in. We're off to pick up some waste wood that would normally go straight in the bin. Stobart Energy pick up this wood in their lorries and turn it into electricity to power homes. It's amazing! Andy presses a button to open the roof sheet of the empty trailer. He then jumps back in the cab where it's safe. This very clever vehicle is called a grab and it's used to load up Andy's trailer. The driver uses the grabber to pick up lots of wood and drop it into the back. To make sure the driver of the grab can see over the top of the trailer, the cab can go up and down. Wow, I've never seen that before. It looks like we're full, so it's time for Andy to put the top back on, hop back in and take this waste wood back to base. Base, Andy opens the back doors. He presses this button to start emptying the trailer. Inside the trailer is an amazing moving floor which moves the wood backwards. It then tips out of the back. Once out, it's then time for another big vehicle to come along and pick up the wood. This is called a loading shovel and it loads the wood into this big machine which chops it into much smaller pieces. These small pieces have now become special wood fuel which can be burned in a power station. This amazing material has come from wood that would normally have been buried underground as rubbish. The lorry is reloaded with the wood fuel and then driven to the special biomass power station. This power station can power 35,000 homes. Andy carefully reverses into the bay and tips the wood fuel off. The wood fuel travels underground, up a conveyor belt and is then burned heating water to produce steam, a bit like a steam train. The steam turns a big turbine or wheel which creates electricity. Thanks very much to Andy and all the team here at Stobart Energy for teaching us all about this amazing lorry and how it helps to create electricity. I'll see you again soon. Bye! Hello everyone, Gecko here and I'm at the RNLI Hoy Lake to meet a very special type of tractor. This is a launch and recovery tractor which means its main job is to take this huge lifeboat down the beach and launch it into the sea. These RNLI lifeboats are really important because they rescue people who are in trouble at sea. That means the tractor needs to be able to launch the boat in super quick time. This tractor doesn't have wheels. These are called caterpillar tracks. They're perfect for travelling quickly across the sandy beach and stop the tractor from getting stuck in the mud. Even the trailer's got these special caterpillar tracks. This is called a swan neck and it's what connects the tractor to the trailer. It can go up and down when launching the boat. And look, up there is the cab. That's where the driver sits. He climbs up a ladder and hops in. Look. 
the amazing crew of the RNLI are launching the lifeboat right now. The tractor's pushing it out of the station and down the ramp to the beach. Wow! Look at it move along the sand. It's really fast. I almost forgot to tell you. This tractor's amazing because it can go under the water. No water gets into the cab because it's totally sealed, a bit like a submarine. Look how deep it's gone. The driver lifts the swan neck, which tilts the lifeboat. Then the boat just slides off. Hooray! The crew of the RNI are volunteers. They give up their free time to save people who are in trouble, which means they also have to do a lot of training. After the training exercise, it's time for the tractor to come back into the water and recover the lifeboat. The lifeboat's very strong, and it's designed to hit the beach at speed. This is the winch. The crew attach the rope from the winch onto the lifeboat. The swan neck tilts the trailer, and the winch pulls it on. Amazing! Wow, that's like magic! The trailer can spin the boat around in a circle so that she's facing the right way out to sea for the next rescue mission. The crew are also launching a hovercraft today. A hovercraft is an amphibious vehicle. Do you know what amphibious means? It means something that can go on land and in the water. This is Chris, and he's today's hovercraft commander. Great to see you, Gecko. Coming into our lifeboat station. It's amazing inside this lifeboat station. There's so many huge vehicles that are all designed to rescue people who are in trouble at sea. Gecko, would you like to join us on a hovercraft training exercise? Oh, yes, please, Chris. To stay safe, warm and dry, the crew have to wear this safety gear. The helmet is actually called a gecko helmet. Can you believe it? It's a real team effort to launch the hovercraft. Push team! The hovercraft is very heavy so a big tractor is used to tow it safely down to the beach. Then, it's all hands on deck to unclip the hovercraft from the trailer and pump up the inflatable sponsons, which help the hovercraft float on water. Then the pilot uses the engine to glide back onto the beach. Hooray! Wow! Look at all of these levers and switches. It all looks very complicated. Nick is the pilot and it's his job to fly the hovercraft. To start the engine, Nick turns this key. We can't see them, but underneath the hovercraft are two fans which blow air downwards. This fills the skirt with air, making the hovercraft lift off the ground. Wowzers trousers! The big fans at the back are called the thrust propellers, 
and these push the hovercraft forwards. When Nick moves this lever, the rudders at the back move. It's these rudders that steer the hovercraft left and right. Nick makes the fans move faster and the hovercraft glides forwards. Woo, that is amazing! As commander of the hovercraft, it's Chris's job to check all around and give Nick instructions to help him fly the hovercraft safely. It's so fast and it's so noisy. Now I know why these gecko helmets have microphones and headphones built into them. They allow us to talk and listen to each other. It feels like we're floating across the sand. And just like that, we're on the water. This hovercraft is amazing! It's now time for me to hop off and let the crew do their training exercise. The RNLI is a charity set up to save lives at sea. And these training exercises help the team here get ready for real life search and rescue missions. So to be as prepared as they possibly can be, the team practice, practice, practice. Today they're practicing how to rescue someone who is stuck in the mud. Playing in deep mud near the sea can be very dangerous especially if the tide is coming in. Now that's what I call getting stuck in. Tides are the rise and fall of the levels of the sea. This is something that's happening all of the time, which means that if you're stuck in the mud on the beach, the tide might come in and surround you with water. It's very important to respect the water and make sure you check when the tide is coming in to make sure you're safe when you're at the beach. Well done team, another successful training mission. Oh dear, it looks like the mechanicals haven't checked the tide times and they're stranded on this island. It looks like there's a storm coming too. Luckily, the hovercraft is the perfect rescue vehicle. Jump aboard, mechanicals! the hovercraft is. All that whizzing about in the sand and sea is dirty work. Every time the hovercraft is called into action, the RNLI crew take great care to make sure it's cleaned up and ready to be used again. Here in the nice dry lifeboat station is the perfect place for the hovercraft to sleep for the night. Thank you very much to the fabulous crew from RNLI Hoylake for allowing me to spend the day with them and their amazing hovercraft. It's been absolutely brilliant. I'll see you again soon. Bye! If you love this video, tap here so you're the first to know about my latest videos. Thanks for watching! Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here, and I'm on a rescue mission. It seems Blue Mechanical's gone missing, but luckily for us, the brilliant Cheshire Police Force are going to help us find him. 
police officers are very brave and their job is to keep everyone safe and sound. This is Scott. He's a police officer and he's going to be driving us around today in this amazing police car. Hey Gecko, when did you last see Blue? I haven't seen him for a few hours now. I'm really worried. Hop in Gecko and we'll radio the control room to see if they've had any sightings of him. Scott can use his police radio to talk to other officers when they're far apart. There's a whole team of people behind the scenes who are there to help Scott do his job. Control from Hotel Tango. Have you had any sightings of Blue Mechanical who's gone missing? Yes, we've had a report of him. Sending you his location now. Over. Phew! That sounds like good news. I do hope Blue is all right. Before we set off, Scott presses this button to turn the flashing lights and siren on. And away we go. The sirens and flashing lights are used to help cars all around see and hear the police coming. It's so drivers can get out of the way and let the police through. And look here, they even have a pop-up sign in the back asking drivers to slow down. Scott is a traffic officer, which means he drives around in this fantastic police car. But Scott, what exactly does a traffic officer do? Our job on the roads as a traffic officer is to stop people doing dangerous things in their cars and their motorbikes and trying to keep people safe on the roads. Sometimes Scott and the team have to chase naughty people or get to those who need help. So this car is really fast. And because the police are here to keep us all safe, they're even allowed to go through red traffic lights during emergencies. Look, there he is. Blue, we were so worried about you. Are you okay? Blue, it's very important never to go off by yourself. You might get lost. It can also be very dangerous going this close to the water without a grown-up. Remember, you can't swim, Blue. Come on, Blue, hop in. We'll give you a lift down to the station. Thank goodness Blue's safe. These amazing cars that helped us find Blue take a lot of looking after too. When we get back to the station, let's head round to the maintenance unit and take a look. A maintenance unit is a bit like Gecko's garage, but this one just looks after police cars. What do you think, Blue? Pretty cool, huh? Now stay out of trouble whilst I have a look around. Connor's checking the oil and Pat is changing a tyre. It's important to keep the oil topped up in a car as it makes things slimy and wet, but not in a horrible gooey way, as it actually helps. See, if things start to go dry, like when we have a sore throat, then lots of engine parts become damaged and then these ace cars won't work properly. This is Tim, and he's a mechanic here at the police car maintenance unit. Hey Gecko. What are you doing today, Tim? I'll check this vehicle over to make sure it's safe to drive. I'll start by doing the lights. Right Tim, you've got some lights out. OK. 
okay, we better fix them. That's better. <laughs> Ouch! Blue, are you okay? <laughs> to get a better look underneath the car, the mechanics can use this really strong hydraulic lift to raise it up. Hey, guys! Can you drop it down a bit? I can't see. Okay, can we just send the ramp down? That'll do there. Look, underneath you can see the exhaust system, which is how the car controls lots of things, like how noisy it is and how much fuel it uses. It also carries dirty fumes from the engine towards the back of the car. And see here, these springs are called the suspension. This makes the ride along the road less bumpy for the passengers. Wow! There's just so much cool stuff hidden underneath a car. I've loved learning all about this amazing police car and the amazing work that the police do to keep us all safe. Thanks very much to Scott and all the team here at the Cheshire Police. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! Gecko here. I'm here at Wigston Fire Station to meet a vehicle that's a really big deal. Hold on to your hats because here it comes. Woohoo! That is the cutest fire engine I've ever seen. This is the mini fire engine and it's used by the amazing firefighters here to teach children all about fire safety. This is Kane. He's a firefighter and the driver of this mini fire engine. It's got all the usual things you'd expect on board. Flashing lights, a siren and a ladder. All in an itty bitty teeny tiny size. But best of all, it's got plenty of room in the back for children to have fun rides. Look at that! There's a pretend radio for making emergency calls. You can really see just how small the mini fire truck is when it's parked next to its big sister. This fire truck is big. And this one is small. Hey Gecko, want to go for a ride? I thought you'd never ask. Yes, please. Mini fire truck is powered by electricity. That means it's got a big battery on board that can be charged overnight. It's very easy to drive. Kane just puts his foot on the pedal and steers with the steering wheel. To turn on the flashing lights and sirens, he presses these buttons. Woohoo! We've arrived at the park. Kane, I think these children would like a ride. That's it. Get your special firefighting kit on. Jump aboard! Wow! We can fit loads of children in the back. 
and even one in the front, next to Kane. We'll make sure we've got our seatbelts on. It's very important that you're safe in any vehicle, so the first thing you should always do is put your seatbelt on. This fire engine is so small that it's allowed on roads and footpaths. This is going to be a fantastic ride. Wave hello to everyone. After the ride, Kane teaches the mini firefighters some important fire safety lessons. This one's called Stop, Drop and Roll. Fire is very dangerous and if there's ever any fire on your clothes, you should stop, drop to the floor, cover your face and roll around. I've loved spending the day with this amazing mini fire engine. Thanks very much to Kane and all of the team at Wigston Fire Station. For now, it's Cheerio from Gecko. Bye! Hello everyone! I'm at a racetrack in Spain to meet some really fast racing cars. These Formula E racing cars are special because they're powered by electricity. This is Robin, and this is Sam. They're racing drivers for the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. They're also teammates. Their job is to drive around the racetrack in the fastest time possible, and hopefully win the race. Today, the team are testing out their cars before the racing season begins. Testing's like practice and practice makes perfect. But first, we need to put the car together. First, the mechanics cool down the car with dry ice, which is a super cold gas. Then they place the rear wing into position and screw into place. The front nose of the car is attached next. Once the helpful mechanics have put the car together, it's time for the drivers to get ready. Racing drivers wear these big helmets to keep them super safe when out on the track. It connects to a neck guard, which keeps the driver nice and secure. They also wear these really smart overalls, which show their team colours. I guess that means I'm in the Envision Virgin Racing team too! Then the gloves go on to protect their hands. After a quick chat with the team engineer, it's time for the drivers to strap themselves into the car. First, Sam jumps in. Then Robin. Both drivers have different helmets, so the team know who's who out on the track. Robin has an orange helmet, and Sam has a white one. Formula E cars have detachable steering wheels. That means they can take them off so the driver can squeeze into the car and then put them back on again, ready to race. The mechanics do some last minute checks on the car. And then it's ready to get out onto the track. The pit crew are all part of the same team, and they check that the track is clear. The driver gives a thumbs up to say he's ready, and the crew give him the go-ahead. Both Sam and Robin leave their garages and drive down to the pit lane. We're almost ready to race.
both cars stop at the end of the pit lane and wait to be told to enter the track. If a car is going past, they can't join the track yet, as that would cause a crash. Ready? Set? Go! Ready? Set? Go! This is the bit I've been looking forward to the most. Look how fast these cars can go! In fact, the top speed of a Formula E racing car is 150 miles per hour. That's as fast as the flight dive of a Golden Eagle. Now the other teams are out on the track. It's time to see who can get the fastest time. This car's misjudged the turn. Whoa, he spun out of control. Can anyone go round this corner correctly? Here's our friend Robin. I hope he doesn't mess it up. Way, he's done it. Well done, Robin. Formula E racing cars are powered by electricity, which means they don't burn any dirty fuel. This is much better for the environment while still having lots of fun. It also means the cars are a lot quieter than normal race cars. Not only do the drivers have to drive around the track, they always need to be checking their energy levels, car temperature, and they need to be speaking to their engineers, all whilst driving. It's a real team effort from everyone. Look, there's a live map of where everyone is on the racing track. I think we've got the call to go back into the pits. The cars slow down and enter the pit lane. The pit crew come out to greet them. Racing cars don't have a reverse gear, so the team have to push the cars back into the garage themselves. Oof, that looks heavy. That's one in. And here's the other. As soon as the car enters the garage, the crew tests the temperature of the car. It's a bit like when your mummy or daddy check your forehead when you're not feeling very well. It's a good way to find out how you're feeling. The car seems a little hot, so it's cooled down with these fans. I think Sam might be hot too. Formula E is a real team game, and it's not just the two drivers that do all of the work. There are more than 50 people in the Envision Virgin Racing team, there's lots of different jobs, like engineers, mechanics, or technicians. The crew have the incredibly important job of making sure the car is the best it can possibly be. And that means looking after it too. The car's worn all its tyres on the track, burning all that rubber on the baking hot road. So we need a fresh new set. This is the control room, home to the clever technicians and engineers. It's their job to keep a close eye on the car whilst it's on the track and come up with new ways to make the car go even faster. It's with these big headsets that they talk to the drivers when they're out on the racetrack. Here comes Sam now. This is his chance to talk to his team and chat about how the car is performing. They all work together to make the car faster so that they can win lots of races. After this meeting, it's time to make some small changes to the car. And then, 
we're back on the track. Racing cars are super speedy, powered by a battery pack. Electric cars are hard to beat, heat the wheels around the racing track. Whoa! Speeding round and round. Whoa! They're the fastest in town. Whoa! Driving really fast, racing cars go super they fly past. Look at the racing drivers, they are sitting really low. They can skid and slide around like a rocket. You should see them. team will be testing out the cars all day on this track to make sure they are at their best when it comes to race day. I've had a great day here in Valencia with the Envision Virgin Racing Formula E team. Thanks very much to all the team. I hope you've learnt as much as I have about these clean energy racing cars. I'll see you again soon. Bye!